lightning like even like round two and round three and he just consistently lost these games that he was sticking in like that one game on echo that he played against life he was going toe to toe with one of the best zergs in the world yeah and you know eventually he just lost he just kind of couldn't handle it once it got too late but he, he was going toe to toe he's definitely still got the skills but for sure i feel like uh, keen in general is a player that has the he has the mentality to win a game where he's behind he has a mentality to win a game uh, where he's ahead or even even. He has so many different builds he can use. He's a great player for pro league versus individual leagues because he's really great at best of one type games. But I feel like his um, his momentum is has been taken away from him. He's he's on a team that's slumping. He has no morale. Like he has he has this mental fortitude. I feel like he can bounce back, mm -hmm. but it's just so hard right now because the hole he's trying to bounce back out of is getting deeper and deeper. I think he's on a three game losing streak. Uh, we'll take a look at his overall record in just a moment, but it's it's really weak. Uh, I mean. When he was on MVP, he was winning, I'd say, about almost half of his games that he was playing, mm -hmm. which is pretty decent for any pro, actually, in yeah. pro league. Um, but the Keen that we're seeing on Prime is just looks like a broken man. It's just yeah. not the Keen we've we've it's come to love. Him and Yoda, man, these two sad Terrans right now. Just, I don't know. I, I think it definitely has a lot to do with the team environment, as you said, uh, especially with Yoda. He was, like, the one guy who was actually winning. Even Creator was losing in the beginning of round one, and Yoda was just like, well... You know, team house environment is terrible. I'm the only one that's winning. Nobody cares. We can't win a game of Pro League anyway. Yeah. So it just doesn't matter. I, I have to actually, which like... Which is the worst feeling. Right. I, I have to, like... For, for those of you who are new to StarCraft 2, you start watching maybe in the post-Kespa era, right? Before, uh, you're, you know, if you start watching after, like, Wings of Liberty ended after MVP and ST stepped down as, as the, the king and king of, uh, of StarCraft 2 with their Eric four king. titles. Yeah. Um, like a bipartisan sort of thing. We had the, we had Keen, okay? So Keen was one of these players. Do you want to compare him to contemporary StarCraft II? He's like a, one slight step above Pyong, you know, one big step above TY. Like, he was that kind of player. Like, it's like, this guy is favorite in most of his matchups. When you see this guy comes out, he's scary. He could be the ace. You never really know what you're going to see. Same with Yoda. And now he's fallen so far. I like that hairstyle, though. Yeah, you like it? I was going to ask you, actually. Rogue uh, going with the same hairstyle, but he's still got the same great song. I was actually listening to this yesterday. Uh, 13 and 6 was known as being the Pro League sniper because he seemed to fail consistently in individual leagues, not get too far along. Kind of these big series when he gets behind, just couldn't hold it together. But in Pro League, we'd come out every single day, and uh, he was on a big streak there around round two, round three. And... Uh, along with uh, a bunch of his other, you know, big hitters on Jin Air, not doing so good in the beginning of round four. But now his win rate is insane. I mean, he isn't up there yeah. at the very top, but he's like 13 7. That's really, really impressive of a win rate. For sure. Well, getting into game number two here, Keen versus Rogue on Echo. Let's jump into it right now. Down here in the bottom right in the purple for Prime. Another Terran player here. It is Keen. And up to the top left in green for Jin Air. Currently up 1-0. It's Rogue. Um, obviously uh, nicknamed Log in the Twitch chat. Um, but uh, oh, yeah. he's used many names. Savage Climax. Now sticking with Rogue. I think uh, the best Savage idea. Climax. Yeah. Anyway. Savage. Mm. He um, he's a sexy boy, and he wants you to go straight and turn right, which is what his uh, pin is based off of. Yes. Came from Guangzhou, coming up here on the night train, the midnight train going anywhere, but it came to the Nexon Arena. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it ended up here. He's like, I don't know where I am, but I'm gonna make the sign anyway. He's and that just train a, brought me here. He's just a small town boy yeah. living in a lonely world. <laughs> he is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Down there in Guangzhou. <laughs> it's kind of funny. He's no doubt a Prime fan. He's not going to stop believing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's holding on to that feeling, Valdez. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I like it. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think Keen's going to go mech on this map? No, because Keen almost never goes mech. 
Yeah. Um, he's a bio player through and through. I'm actually surprised to see him go CC first on this map, though. Mm. I was uh, when I was looking at the predictions. I'm like, it's Echo TBZ, you know. And immediately I'm like, okay, who's the Terran? Oh, it's Keen. Well, he's not gonna go Mac. Uh, unless he's been practicing his mech style with the recent uh, resurgence of these mech uh, plays from innovation on maps such as Echo or Terraform. Yeah. Um, Coda has seen maybe, it a few but times. I, I don't think he's that kind of player. The CC first is suspicious because it does kind of... It slows down pressure, and Keen is all about early aggression, early pressure. Rogue will respond to this with a double hatch before pool. So that's a, a worthwhile scout, 100% there for him here. Yeah, great scout. Even uh, delayed that CC a bit, so it was just annoying for some SCVs to be pulled. We saw um, two mech players lose recently. Um, a lot of people are saying that mech is really strong right now. I, I noticed when I was streaming yesterday, I had like, a ton of people in my chat asking me about that. Wolf, do you think mech's Wolf, too strong? what about mech? Oh, Koreans say, or, are the Koreans saying mech is, is too strong? No, not really. It's just more viable. And it's just innovation, <laughs> actually, I feel. Um, we saw Bravo and Reality come out and just get bopped by two Zergs that were just straight up better than them, is what I felt. The maps weren't as ideal. They did it on Iron Fortress and Coda, which are not Echo and Terraform. Funny how that works. <laughs> um, so I, I would love to see more players try to do it on these two maps and see if they can try to abuse it because mech especially on this map like the fourth base you just you can't get in there it's just not happening like <laughs> no so. um let's see if he takes a fast third cc after this because that would possibly be the most unkeen like thing we've ever seen mm. uh, because he hasn't taken a second gas okay he's doing it just now as i say that this is, this is the yeah. timing he's for like it. oh oh sorry <laughs> i was a bit late comes. on that yeah now, you were a little bit late but it's fine it's okay Keen. so Perhaps Banshee, and he is you know doing a good job of delaying or not delaying but denying the Overlord scouts so far. Yeah. Rogue going pretty greedy back at home, only taking his gases now, getting out a lot of queens, trying to get that creep out very early. Took his three bases very early as well with that scout as you were mentioning. Going to be in a pretty good place coming in into the mid game here as long as he doesn't take too much damage from the harass from Keen. Cooling tower is going to go down here to make it a lot more difficult to actually har Hellion harass. It's one of the things you can do when your opponent goes CC first. The Hellions are so late that, uh, you know, you can get that cooling tower easy with just four links. You're able to clear that up, slow down that pressure. Good scout here on the starport. Oh, he's even going to save the Overlord. Really nice. Didn't see the tech lab, but saw the barracks was building something, so pretty reasonable to assume that it was a tech lab. But you can see the barracks is actually adding something. You just couldn't see what the add-on was. Ooh, and he's not going to switch it just yet. He's going to make a medevac first. Perhaps just a fast him with this. Yep. Okay, starting to look more like Keen. That's the Keen I know. Hellions <laughs> and aggression. That's what it's all about. Hellions, Widow Mine drop possibly here. And the first two Hellions are going to come over here. See the rocks have been knocked down, that cooling tower. Only now is the creep really getting in the middle there, but he does already have his queens in position, so Hellions not going to find much. Going to have to wait a little bit later to get any kind of harassed on here for Keen. No. This Overlord's actually going to get sacked to see if he's going Banshees or not. I don't uh, think he actually got to see. Yeah, that Overlord was very weak. I don't believe nope. so. No vision on the starport. He didn't even have vision of it finishing, so he has no idea. He's going to put down two safe spores regardless. See how much he can uh, defend against this. And it is, you know, a very similar build to the last one. Actually, that Widowmine drop Hellions in the front. Yep, third gas being taken here. Four barracks though, obviously with the stem. It's gonna be for those upgrades it looks like. Perhaps a heavy marauder style. Drop coming in now, but already units in position, spore crawler as well. Yeah, this is gonna get shut down hard. He'd better not even unload those yep. out of there. <laughs> he could have tried like Yoda, but probably would have met about the same fate. Rogue just in a good spot here. I mean, he shut down all the aggression. He's got to look at the upgrade difference between the check game we just watched. Staying even with upgrades, in fact, ahead, um, arguably, because he's getting both at the same time. Look at his splits against the Widowmines. Ooh, that one was the best. Ooh. Yeah, he, he was trying to split those two lings above the first Widowmine there, but uh, 
They actually both both got hit, so the second one got to hit the drones. But he's got free reign to spread his creep. So that means he can actually drone while he's getting upgrades, while he's getting his lair. So he can start baneling speed in just a second. He can probably even get a spire first, to be totally honest. That's how comfortable he should probably feel right now. And spire's coming up first. He knows that Keen isn't moving out to be aggressive because he committed a lot to this early drop that did nothing. So his barracks are late, his parade push, his, his aggression on the ground is late. A lot of overlords going down here, actually, though, to this Viking. Yeah, the Holt Viking getting those kills. Already up to two, gonna get three. Not pulling back the overlords in time was Rogue happen though three is that's not bad he still has that one actually behind the third base so he did see the exact timing of that coming down uh, knew it wasn't any kind of weird two base follow-up knew that uh, Keen was transitioning as well so as you said total freedom given to Rogue here he also saw and this is really important that you point this out he also saw that the commander was being like built on the low ground which mm -hmm. means that Keen is definitely not even considering aggression so um, see a big cancel on all those tumors as this attack comes in this is going to be Keen's first move onto the creep. Bailing speed is not done yet, but 1-1 one, one is nearly done, and Keen only has a plus one attack. And it's going to take a while, you know, with all this creep that has been spread by those early creep queens, getting it out super early. Uh, Rogue's great start is just going to help him against any kind of push. Like, you see Keen goes on the creep there, and he's like, well, I can't really do much. Rogue is buying so much time for that later bailing speed to come down, and he's going to have a bunch of bailings as well. Notice the creep spread style here for Rogue, how it differs, how it's better than what we saw from Czech. It's just simply thickness isn't as important as the actual coverage that you get. He covers all directions, all sides of the ramp. There's no moment where Keen can scan and go, oh, this is the best way to attack here. He's going to see this uh, fourth base is completed, but not saturated. Yeah, it may trigger him to try to punish that or at least do some damage. Makes him feel a little bit less concerned about it at the same time, because at least it's not like, okay, I have to do something about this right now. It's been up for a while. It's like, oh, okay, I need to do something about this soon. This is not an immediate uh, huge concern. Okay, these Hellions are going to get caught here, but it's going to give this bio a big time to spread. He's got a ton of Marines up there. Yeah. Just plus one attack. Up the ramp there. Rogue not able to see it. But another nice scan going to come down here, clean up all the creep outside that fourth base, and he should be able to get his Widow Mines in a pretty good position. Oh, the Widow Mines need to get hits off, and they don't really. And that's a ton more Banelings about to morph. Let's see if Rogue has them in time. Okay. Let's see the splits. The splits are really nice here, but I just don't think he's got enough bio. Not enough stuff back here. He only had one Widow Mine. Yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah, that was just on creep, way too many speed banes. So he's going to kill the entire ground army here. In fact, the medevacs are a bit vulnerable. Oh, look at that drawing of the Widowmine hit into those Marines. And so many mutas here. Oh, that Widowmine. Oh, boy. Just recharged, but not able to get that hit off. 2-2 two -two upgrades massively ahead here for Rogue. He just needs to hold on to his bases. If he can hold on to this fourth base for just a little bit longer, the mutalist count is starting to get out of control. He already has seven on the map. Six more about to pop out. They'll put him at 13. He's triggering his Widow Mines <laughs> preemptively really well. Look at that. Sends even one more Zergling to trigger this so he can actually push this back and chase with his Mulus. He can't let that happen. He's got to have his Marines around, and he knows it. He's got to back off. And meanwhile, Rogue just sitting on 80 drones, four bases. Fantastic economy. Really great creep. And as you said, the upgrade lead. There's probably not one single place that Rogue is behind him right now. Yeah. I mean... Quite literally, his, he's replaced the creep, some of it, in the middle of the map that was killed earlier. So his creep is still being pushed across the map. This is his weakest point in creep. That's the least important point on the map right now because he's not taking a fifth uh, anytime soon as he is dealing with this pressure. Um, but, you know, he's poised to replace the creep in the middle, continue pushing that. He's already replaced the creep on the left side of the map. Chain being the, dropped. Uh, the activeness of these mutas, too. Shutting down the drop before it even gets close to the base of Rogue. Like, those Widow Mines never even have a chance to get uh, burrowed at all. So look at this. Is, yeah, look at this. Way out of position, Keen is. Supply Depot down here. He's going to pull the entire army back. Rogue just buying more and more time here. Oh, God. Keen is just falling apart here, man. He didn't raise the Depot to his main base. He had so much time to do so. Speedlings are killing SCVs in high quantity. This should never be happening at this stage of the game, even if your army's out of position. You're going to raise those Depots, mineral lock them away, and send your army back. It should not be this slow. It should not be this late. You should never, like, you should never have links in your main base, your natural, and your third base. Like when you have walls up, that should never happen. Yeah, there should have at least have been some kind of bunker set up or some kind of Sim City at the third base. Also, as you said, supply depot is just not being raised, causing havoc in the main and the natural. 
What we're seeing here is Keen just kind of falling apart to one of these very, really fantastic best of one macro Zergs and Rogue. And yeah. Rogue is just playing it so, so well. He was given all the freedom in the world very early on in the game, and he's going to run away with this one, man. With nearly 80 drones, in fact, soon to be 83, he doesn't even need a fifth base. Like, he could take one fairly soon if he wants to, but I think he just wants to keep taking engagements because the creep spread is still decent. He can reinforce units quickly. After he takes one more fight, he'll probably take that fifth. But look how many Lings and Bailings is able to afford. He's hitting all of his injects. There's constant restreams of uh, reinforcements. Now, Keen is about to hit 2-2, two -two, which will finally put him up even up on upgrades. He actually starts a plus-three attack as well. So that's that's something he's got for taking these engagements, but he's constantly being outmaneuvered oh, by these Mutalists. There's no turret here in the natural. He either had one and it got killed and he never remade it, or he just never made one at all. And I think it might be the latter on that one. I think you're right. Yeah. I, you know... Maybe just forgetting it in the heat of the moment. Look at how many bailings are rolling. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. Well, that what? is a game changer. And now with two, two upgrades, you can end a second incredible Widowmine hit. Unbelievable. Widowmine's winning that fight there for Keen. I think Rogue is just saying, okay, get out of my game. Like, <laughs> I am just so far ahead. But, you know, overconfident moves can definitely get Keen straight back into this game. Widowmines are very powerful if you group up your units. He still has 20 banelings left over. And he made 62 wings instantly remax using all of his larvae. And still King cannot deal with these mules. Those Marines are all in the red. They stim too many times. He can actually kill them, kill the medevacs, force these units to retreat. If he actually has one ace, these medevacs back like I'm watching him do right now. He oh. actually is going to lose so many. <laughs> <laughs> the little mine hits in this game are so good, but it just doesn't matter. If it's he, the saddest thing. If he was paying more attention to his mutalists in that fight as well, he could have gotten like four medevacs for free. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Let me get this Viking for free, though, and just retreat. Mm. I mean, this has depleted the Larva quite significantly for Rogue. He's got so many hatcheries. He has that macro hatch. He's now taking a fifth base. Yeah, he's making two hatcheries at a time now. I think he's beginning to realize. He's just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to take every base on the map. He's like, oh, no, my, all my bailings. I'll just remake them instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Those Zona Mines have not been cleaned up. Yeah, that's, it could be a massive hit on these uh, links. We'll see if uh, more hits come down. <laughs> Units lost right now, 15,000 to 10,000. Uh, obviously, Rogue with the 15,000 loss. It's just like the economy has been more than twice as good for Rogue, exactly. so it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. Okay, he's finally made a turret here. Yep. Gonna help out with the defense a bit. Keen is trying to take the fourth base now. And he's actually taking a pretty good engagement here. He does have plus three, nearly finished. He's gonna kill that hatch without a cancel. But too many Mutalists here, and a retreat with the Medivacs is going to be difficult. Kills the full Medivac there Ooh. as well. Yeah. Keen has been doing something weird in this game as well. He made two Engineering Bays. Maybe one went down, but he's been slowly upgrading only one upgrade at a time. Uh, got the plus two attack and then armor. Yeah. Now getting the plus three attack and hasn't he's, begun armor yet. He's had the ability to afford it as well, and he does still have both E-Bays. I just checked. So it's, it's, I guess he's just kind of messing up a little bit or is in the heat of the moment. Trying to bait these links into that Widowmine does get it off. That Widowmine has 20 kills currently. Mm. Um, Though he survives, you know, he holds a fourth base, but I just feel like he's struggling so much to put any dents into Rogue. Yeah. I mean, Rogue has secured both of those bases he was trying to take. And he's got the other base here cre uh, creeped up for Keen. Keen gets the planetary, of course, he's going to extend it unless Rogue can, like, end it before. It really gets up where he's got a great defense, but Rogue seems to be transitioning out of this kind of, uh, you know, lower tech style that the Rogue, or that Zerg's used from time to time, this heavy banling link style, not getting those three tree upgrades, no hive. But we do see the infestation pick him down, so maybe thinking about that transition. Oh god, the splits here are just non-existent. Way too many good banling hits here, and actually looks like they may continue. There's not a lot of room to split in this choke point. He's actually getting flanked here with this many banelings. Looks like True in the booth right now. Yeah. Just gets pushed back. Again, the Medivacs on the retreat, but nothing underneath them. And a planter here with no turrets can either be killed by Mutalis or Bandlings. He's got the choice. Yeah, he's coming in. Kills every single SCV. Planetary goes down. He's kind of back off. He's like, oh, I better save these Bandlings. Oh, Keen. the Burrow Bandlings. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this game has been so fun. But Keen yet is so one-sided at the same time. <laughs> he went down from like 150 supply to 80 supply in about three seconds there. Yeah. That was that was pretty nasty. Now he's going to lose the remainder of his economy here at the natural. Not even enough Marines to push this back. Only the Thor is threatening. I feel like he could have probably magic boxed that. The Vulus have plus two. They're about to have plus one armor. Just playing it safe. 
if if eventually Keen runs out of money, then he just wins anyways. So 28 bands on the way. GG, just GG. GG's out. Yeah. He's like, I, I can't take any more of this beating. Rogue doing a very nice job there, taking down Keen. He was the heavy favorite, but he does his job. Very nice, entertaining fashion there. Those baneling uh, explosions, I, man. Yeah. I would almost believe it if he was like, oh, I was just rolling in them in on, on purpose, you know? Yeah. Just doing it for the show. Just <laughs> too much damage there. And actually, you know, you were talking about how he was trying to transition out of that wing meter baneling into actual, like, high tech medium and stage and stuff. He, by rights, he should have won that game a long time ago, but he lost, like, 30 banelings at a time. <laughs> I mean, he was engaging off creep into Widow Mines with all of his banelings clumped up, like, not triggering them at all. He's just like, okay, I've got so much stuff. I'm showing it to you. Get out of my game. But he tried to stick it through. Props to him. And, uh, you know, like I said before, I think Rogue just miles ahead of where Keen is right now. So very heavy favorite in that game. Keen not easily gets sold by Boom Boom there in the booth. Yeah. Put that mouse bungee away. It's just so sad when I look at the faces of Keen and Yoda especially. They just look both so dead inside, as you said. Well, I mean, if you look at Creator, he never looked that way. He looked upset. Yeah. But he didn't have this look of melancholy, this look of like, what am I doing yeah. with my life? The fight was still in his eyes, and he really, really cared when he lost. He was so upset at times. Um, even in just straight up games that he got defeated by one of the best turns in the world, Mario, he would still, you know, cry and get really upset. But Yoda and Keen, they just go in there with a blank face and they come out with a blank face, just looking so sad. But guys, we're going to take a three minute break. We'll get to game number three after this.